afternoon everyone i thank the lord for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony with you all i am prashanti we were from a hindu family and i accepted christ at age of 24 there are many scriptural passages which ministered to me in my walk with the lord in past few months let me consider one of them from second kings chapter 4 this is a chapter full of miracles After reading this we are just faced with one question is there anything too difficult for the lord and the answer you give to this question does not depend on any signs but it depends on your faith alone from verse 8 we read about a shunamite women this women constrained prophet elisha to have food at her house seeing he is a frequent traveler to her town of shunem As the days go by she understood something calls her husband one day and tells look now i know that this is a holy man of god so let us make an upper room for him on the wall arrange a bed table chair and a lampstand so that he can turn in whenever he passes by now prophet was very impressed by her gesture calls his servant gehazi one day to ask of her if anything uh, any favor they can do for her if she need any introduction to the king or the commander of the army she just replies i dwell among my own people this shows the caliber of that woman that she is satisfied with her current state but gehazi goes back and informs the prophet that she is barren and her husband is old already then elisha calls for her and says next year by this time you will embrace a son what an amazing prophecy about time and baby also but she wouldn't believe saying do not lie to me my lord because she might have been expecting it from many years nothing happened and it seemed impossible for her At this point of time I would like to share my personal experience in India we stayed in a different state in Chennai I'm um, as we both were working there it's 7 hour journey from our hometown we were married for 4 years and we didn't have children we had pressure from all sides and they wouldn't believe when we say we are not taking any family planning measures We went for checkup in two different hospitals and in both the places they have confirmed that it is impossible to have children by natural way because um his sperm count is very very low and they informed us to get prepared for the artificial methods we don't know what to do and i didn't even share with my parents and immediately few days after that my husband was deputed to singapore on his project work in that same year 2010 in the month of december i took 3 weeks of leave from my work and i joined him here during the vacation when my husband was away at work i used to pray lord there is no deficiency in your sight and i i would cry like an adamant child for a toy lord you have to give me a baby before i leave this country because only you can do that i cannot bear this shame any more and this used to be my prayer during that time and after 3 weeks of vacation i returned to chennai and in 2011 january i was compelled to attend a family ceremony at our home i mean my in laws place due to festive season i didn't have train tickets managed to get a bus ticket and i headed for my hometown it's a night journey and around 5 am in the morning i felt something wrong like whether this bus is going on the road or is it flying in the air it is going at a tremendous speed and just after few minutes i sensed that i heard a big sound bus hit the divider and it crashed into the nearby fields to my horror when i opened my eyes the seats were above our heads bus overturned and we were in a glass rubble a uh, villagers nearby rushed to the spot to drag the passengers out of bus um, because if any delay then the rear engine would catch fire and we would all be burnt alive by god's grace i managed to get my purse to pay for my next journey reach the destination and after the ceremony i have informed my in-laws that i would like to see a gynecologist then uh, that night she confirmed i am pregnant but by that time i have started bleeding already because of the shock and doctor warned uh, in the, uh, that i am in a danger of losing baby and i need complete bed rest for a month 
I have requested everyone not to inform my husband anything about the accident but let him rejoice with the good news alone because it would take another 3 months for him to return to India. All I would say is it's a miracle that I have conceived. My baby and me were alive that day in that major accident. Trust me there is not even a single scratch on my body. Lord has just carried us in his mighty arms. Praise be to our God. Now let us come back to the passage as prophet said Shunammite women was blessed with a baby boy and few years down the line one day child complains of head pain and dies by noon this women took the dead body of the child went to the upper room laid it on prophet's bed closed the door and called her husband to arrange a donkey for her to go and meet prophet at mount carmel Now her husband asked why are you going today it's not a sabbath or a new moon day but she just replies it is well on the way also she encounters gehazi and when asked of her well being she replies it is well is she really well what a tremendous courage and faith to keep the dead body of child at home and to answer it is well It's not easy to say like Job the Lord gave and Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord Now this lady goes to the prophet catches hold of his feet and cries in deep distress I will not leave you my lord Prophet sent uh, his servant first but later he comes laid himself on the child and prayed for him Elisha gives warmth and God gave gives breath and the child is alive now god could have revealed this to the prophet but he has hidden it to test the faith of this women now we read that while she was crying in her deep distress gehazi tries to push her away likewise we face many gehazis in our lives circumstances that tries to push us away from our faith i would like to share what i have been going through from past few months On 7th of February I was diagnosed with locally advanced stage of anorectal cancer at SGH. Doctor suggested 28 days of chemo and radiation with the expectation that tumor would shrink by 50% and then they can proceed for surgery later. I have faced severe side effects. The skin peeled off in and around the area where radiation was given with blood and pus oozing out of it. After all these dark days of pain a scan was taken on 27th of April to observe the shrinkage of tumor to the surprise tumor did not shrink even a little bit instead it spread to other parts like lungs and all and after the spread the tumor went out of my rectal wall and started pressing some nerves on left side severe pain i cannot walk but limp only on my right leg Now my surgeon explained to us I you know, we cannot proceed for surgery because it's aggressive we have to arrest the spread first we'll do a trial and trial uh, give two more cycles of chemo and if spread remains stable then we can go for surgery if not you have to go for chemo again and again My husband's cousin is also an oncology surgeon in India and few other doctors they were keeping in track of my reports from first and after seeing the second scan results they have come to a conclusion this lady will not survive more than a year better let her stay with her loved ones and eat whatever she likes in her last days already we were in pain and hearing these defeating voices was very difficult to take up We read in Mark chapter 5 a synagogue a synagogue ruler Zairus comes to Lord Jesus falls at his feet and begs him Lord my daughter is at a point of death please come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live Now Jesus goes with him but before reaching the home certain men from the ruler's house comes to say your your daughter is dead Why trouble the master any further? She is no more. Why do you trouble the teacher? Hearing these words, you know what Jesus said at that moment: "Don't be afraid, only believe." He never said, "Don't worry, Zairus, I will come and raise your daughter." But he said, "Only believe." Later, he went into the house and did raise the little girl. 
throughout the gospels also we read many such instances uh, where lord said to the women who was suffering from the blood flow for 12 years daughter your faith has made you well go in peace and be healed to the canaanite women lord said o women great is thy faith be is be it unto thee as you wish and at the same hour her daughter was healed now while i was going through these difficulties a man of god told me prashanti there is no sickness that lord cannot heal satan and circumstances will bring lot of fears and doubts in you but never lose your faith your faith is the consultation fee to your divine physician he honors that faith and comes to your rescue as lord said unto thomas blessed are those who has not seen me yet believe in me now uh, before the second scan while i was going through these side effects i used to cry day and night lord you speak with me i need your comfort cannot bear this pain and this was my usual prayer daily and slowly i got better new skin formed on the wounds and i was able to sit on 15th of april around 4 am in the morning i was hearing these lines in my mother tongue samadhi lo nundi nee pranamunu vimochinchuchunnadu karuna kataakshamulu neeku kiritamuga unchunnadu i don't know the reference also but later i got to know it's psalm 103 verse 4 who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies again and again i was hearing these i woke up and i sat down and worshiped the lord with great joy but i never understood at that point of time why i heard this promise only after the second scan and after hearing all this disturbing news i realized lord assured me whatever your results might turn up doctors might give up hope but i will redeem your life from destruction this is our mighty lord who intervenes when human resources give up when i shared these uh, results and conclusions to a dear auntie who has been praying continuously for me she said right away prashanti only lord has last word in your life claim this promise from psalm 118 verse 17 i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord you personalize it by faith you confess it with your mouth in your daily prayers My dear listeners you may not know who Lord Jesus is but he knows you very well because he is your creator he knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb be it any situation you are going through he is there to deliver you as he delivered me now after two cycles of chemo the spread in my lungs remained stable by god's grace i underwent surgery on 15th of july and shifted to hdu my body was surrounded by so many wires and uh, tubes and in pain as the days go by one by one was removed and i am free to move that night i cried to the lord not for healing or anything i pictureized that these were all like cords of sin that tied me up and to remove every cord of sin and make me free from guilt hell and punishment lord you paid a great price for me your body was bruised and you suffered a wretched death for me on the cross you did not keep anything for yourself your side was pierced to bring out that last drop of blood from you you emptied yourself to make me whole and free as we read in hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 he himself suffered being tempted he is able to aid those who are tempted He has endured the pain of sin for millenniums because in his great love he does not want even one person to be lost. My dear ones, our Lord is a compassionate God, a living God who is never blind to your tears or deaf to your cry. He is not there just way way above the heaven seeing you and I suffering. He came down in the burning bush hearing the cry of the children of Israel that day. He was with them in the pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire throughout their wilderness journey and in due time he sent his own son as a savior of mankind 
he did not leave us as orphans but he sent the comforter god the holy spirit to dwell in us i thank you all my dear brothers and sisters who equally fought this battle for me at the throne of grace you cried out for my cause you set apart a time formed as groups and you pleaded for me you sent the prayer request to many friends and relatives and amongst those who prayed who have not known or seen me are more than those who have seen me a dear auntie said we cannot bear your praying girl but you don't give up run my girl you run the race we are all raising the banner of prayer and lord will bring you out of this victoriously that is the power of prayer and the greatest privilege we have as children of one father as members of body of christ jesus our lord when one member suffers all others suffer with it it would take a uh, few more hours if i have to list out the tremendous practical um, practical help extended to my family in this difficult time we closely felt the unseen hand of god he has placed his angels everywhere to lead us in this journey when we first met our surgeon professor tang chung leong on saturday uh, that is february 1st we were told at the registration counter he is a senior consultant we can have only 10 to 15 minutes of his time so i was telling him all my problems the treatment at cgh and for the past few months and uh, it was diagnosed as hemorrhoids then he did a quick uh, physical examination and he said no it's not hemorrhoids but i feel a lump there immediately he prescribed for colonoscopy ct and mri scans in that hurry i forgot to mention that dr jane referred us we came out of his room to get the appointments and the financial statement it was around 8000 dollars for these three tests uh, now after my husband changed his job god has given him wisdom to take a private insurance because his employer is not covering the family medical needs but the insurer said when we called him he said it will not be covered under insurance because she is not going to get admitted for these tests then we went back to inform the doctor as we cannot go in we inform the attending nurse that we will take these tests in india during the holidays as we cannot afford to pay here she said it's up to you and uh, we walked out of the block almost then the same nurse came running behind us uh, telling doctor wants to see you then we when we went in he said young lady i don't know if you know the situation but i don't want to do any delay on you i will change all your documents and he made it as an inpatient uh, to cover the insurance uh because of that step he took on that day all my bills were covered by the insurance and later they got to know by whom we were referred and i was treated as dr jane's good friend by everyone at sgh she is with us at every point of treatment she speed up the process to do all the initial tests on the same day to have a collective report even during the surgery and also for the second admission to treat my infection coming to my family god has blessed me with a loving and sacrificing family on the day of diagnosis my husband had to attend many calls friends visiting us and everybody suggested to take the treatment in india because it would be difficult without any support here it was very difficult for him to take the decision but he decided whatever it is we will go through it as a family i will not send her there because if we send her we cannot be at peace here without knowing what is happening to her and immediately after his decision my sister left her two little kids with my parents and flew here you know i suffered only in pain but she suffered in all different aspects for me looked after me day and night more than a nursing mother could care for her baby my husband could concentrate on his work because she attended to all the family needs my wounds were in a place where i couldn't see she sat for hours to dress them all patiently preparing little little meals throughout the day to give me fresh food there were many days that she would take only water sometimes consecutively for 3 days fasting and praying and crying out for me 
though the situation was not favorable outside god has turned it good for us that my husband could work from home and he has extended my sister's visa every time and she could stay for 6 months with us my little ones also became independent during this time traveled on their own to school changing two buses the dear school family supported us by their prayers practical help and in counseling the children to understand the situation at home and be responsible to do their work when i returned home after my surgery my little ones have prepared a get well soon card for me with these words mama we know you are in pain but don't be discouraged god is over all count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done now before closing i would like to share this beautiful illustration which i heard recently that changed my perspective of prayer a man of god in his dream is traveling in a boat to cross the river his boat hits a rock he keeps praying get rid of this rock get rid of this rock as he couldn't go through that's the picture of the problem he is facing but lord tells him no i will not remove the rock instead i will raise the level of water and make you pass through you want to pass through right i'll do it for you until i heard this illustration my prayer was lord remove my tumor remove my tumor because my surgeon said on the first day of diagnosis your tumor has affected many internal organs i have to remove your lymph nodes sphincter muscle part of vagina anus and a list of organs like this uh, as you and you have to be on a permanent stoma i'm telling you there is nothing wrong as a surgeon it's his duty to let me know what i have to go through but it was very difficult for me to accept first time in my life i'm hearing this word called stoma and i really don't know what it does so uh, always i would pray lord remove my tumor and to save my body parts but after hearing this i stopped praying uh, telling remove my tumor instead i would say lord give me grace to accept thy will whatever happens you will make me pass through this trouble also we read in psalm 23 he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies where in the presence of my enemies not in the absence of course if the enemies are dead and gone you will rejoice and party yourself but the lord says enemies are still there don't worry relax i am with you come let us have a meal this illustration has strengthened my faith a lot yes there is cancer in my body after the surgery also my pathology report says still there are deposits of cancer cells and my surgeon said there is a high risk of relapse there is spread in the lungs also true the enemy is still there but his grace is sufficient in our lives he will make me an overcomer and he will make you an overcomer in christ jesus our lord now i would like to share that the lord has answered all my fears and complaints from his precious word uh, i would share just one of it now uh, the second time when i was admitted to treat the infection uh, a drain tube was inserted behind me to collect the fluid in a bottle i couldn't lie flat or lie on my right side but only on my left side I don't express it to uh, others but I would complain to myself oh god it is so difficult to speak how long to go with this like that then 3 days after fixing the tube in hospital one day apart from my daily portion I thought let me read some prophetical book and I just started reading Ezekiel when I came to chapter 4 I understood like it was written like uh, lord tells Ezekiel that you have to lie on your left side for 390 days to bear the iniquity of the children of Israel and after completing that lie on your right side for 40 days to bear the iniquity of Judah further down lord says i will constrain you so that you cannot move from one side to another till you have ended the days of seize After reading this I stopped complaining for my sickness I am constrained now but prophet did nothing to bear the sins of his people lord constrained him and he just did it without any complaining I know this verse that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the lord this was only in my head 
but my trial has taught me how to live by his precious living word i thank you all for listening to me patiently may the lord give us grace to be steadfast in our faith and be able to say it is well as the shunamite women said we don't know if the future would be better for us year 2020 has taught the whole world a great lesson that in spite of all achievements man is a finite being and mankind needs a savior bible says for what shall profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul god has given us this free will to choose where we would spend our eternity many thousands have passed away in the short period today you and i are kept alive by his grace alone let us all be prepared to meet our soon coming savior and we shall be with him forever a place where there is no more death nor sorrow nor crying nor pain may the name of lord be glorified